A Legacy of Privilege, The Roots of Bangladesh's Quota System Bangladesh's quota system, a policy deeply intertwined with its tumultuous birth, has long been a subject of contention. Established in the aftermath of the country's bloody struggle for independence from Pakistan in 1971, it aimed to honor the sacrifices of the Mukti Bahini, the valiant freedom fighters who fought for the nation's liberation. The system, enshrined in the constitution, reserved a significant portion of government jobs and educational opportunities for these war heroes and their descendants, a gesture intended to provide for those who had given so much for their nation's freedom. However, what began as a gesture of gratitude gradually morphed into a complex and controversial policy, its noble intentions often overshadowed by accusations of perpetuating privilege and inequality. Over the decades the quota system faced growing criticism, with many arguing that it had deviated from its original purpose, creating a system where lineage trumped merit. Critics contended that it fostered a culture of entitlement among a select few, leaving a vast segment of the population feeling marginalized and excluded from opportunities they rightfully deserved. The system's complexities deepened with subsequent amendments and revisions, further fueling the flames of discontent. With each passing year, the quota system became increasingly entangled in the intricate web of Bangladeshi politics, its fate often dictated by the whims of those in power. As the nation progressed, the quota system, once a symbol of solidarity and sacrifice, emerged as a stark reminder of the enduring legacy of the past, a policy struggling to find its place in a rapidly changing society. In June 2024, the simmering discontent over Bangladesh's quota system reached a boiling point, erupting into widespread protests that shook the nation to its core. The catalyst for this wave of unrest was a high court ruling that reinstated the quota system, reserving a significant percentage of government jobs for the descendants of freedom fighters. This decision, perceived by many as a step backward, ignited the fury of students and activists who had long demanded a merit-based system, one that valued individual capabilities over lineage. The High Court's ruling served as a stark reminder of the government's reluctance to address the deeply entrenched inequalities perpetuated by the quota system. It was seen as a blatant disregard for the aspirations of a generation yearning for a level playing field, a system that rewarded hard work and talent over inherited privilege. The students, at the forefront of this movement, recognized that their futures were being held hostage by a system that favored a select few, leaving them to grapple with the consequences of a policy they had no hand in creating. The protests, ignited by the High Court's decision, spread like wildfire across university campuses, quickly evolving into a nationwide movement that transcended social and economic barriers. Students from all walks of life, united by a shared sense of injustice, took to the streets, their voices echoing with the demand for a fairer and more equitable Bangladesh. The demonstrations, fueled by years of pent-up frustration and a deep-seated desire for change, signaled a turning point in the nation's history, a moment where the youth rose to challenge the status quo and demand a stake in their own future. The initial days of the quota protests were marked by a spirit of peaceful resistance, with students organizing rallies, marches, and sit-ins to voice their demands. They understood the power of their collective voice the strength in their unity, and the importance of engaging in civil disobedience to bring about meaningful change. Their demands were clear, a complete overhaul of the quota system, and the implementation of a merit-based recruitment process that provided equal opportunities for all. However, the government's response to these peaceful demonstrations was far from measured. What began as a student-led movement for equal opportunities was met with a heavy-handed crackdown, a display of force that shocked the nation and drew condemnation from across the globe. Instead of engaging in dialogue and acknowledging the legitimate concerns of its citizens, the government chose the path of repression, unleashing the full force of its security apparatus upon unarmed protesters. Images of students being brutally beaten, tear-gassed, and arrested for merely exercising their fundamental right to peaceful assembly flooded social media, sparking outrage and solidifying international condemnation. The government's actions, instead of quelling the protests, only served to further inflame the situation pushing the nation towards a precipice of uncertainty and fear. The brutal crackdown on peaceful protesters marked a dark chapter in Bangladesh's history, a stark reminder of the fragility of democratic ideals in the face of unchecked power. 
As images of the Bangladeshi government's brutal crackdown on peaceful protesters spread across the globe, a wave of condemnation and outrage swept through the international community. Governments, human rights organizations, and prominent figures from around the world expressed their shock and dismay at the violence unleashed upon unarmed citizens, their voices uniting in a chorus of disapproval against the blatant disregard for human rights. The United Nations, a beacon of hope and a champion of human rights, issued a scathing rebuke of the Bangladeshi government's actions, demanding an immediate end to the violence and calling for an independent investigation into the use of excessive force against protesters. The United States, often accused of turning a blind eye to human rights abuses in pursuit of its geopolitical interests, found itself compelled to condemn the crackdown, urging restraint and dialogue. Adding to the condemnation was a particularly egregious incident involving the misuse of UN vehicles by individuals alleged to be affiliated with the ruling party. These vehicles, meant to be symbols of peace and neutrality, were reportedly used to transport individuals who attacked protesters, further tarnishing the image of the Bangladeshi government on the international stage. This incident, widely reported by international media, served as a stark reminder of the erosion of trust and the blatant disregard for international norms by those in power. In the digital age where information flows freely across borders, Technology played a pivotal role in both amplifying and stifling the voices of dissent during the Bangladesh quota protests. Social media platforms, once hailed as tools for democratization and empowerment, became both battlegrounds and lifelines, their power to connect and inform harnessed by both sides of the struggle. For the protesters, social media emerged as a vital tool for mobilization and communication. Facebook, Twitter, and other platforms became virtual megaphones, allowing them to bypass traditional media outlets, often controlled or influenced by the government, and share their stories, experiences, and demands directly with the world. The hashtag, hashtag quota reform movement gained traction spreading awareness about the protests and garnering support from individuals and organizations across the globe. However, the government, recognizing the power of these digital platforms, resorted to increasingly desperate measures to control the narrative and silence dissenting voices. Intermittent internet shutdowns, a tactic employed by authoritarian regimes worldwide, became commonplace, disrupting communication networks and hindering the protesters' ability to organize and mobilize. Social media platforms, deemed a threat to national security, faced censorship, with access restricted and accounts critical of the government suspended. As the quota protests raged on, the Bangladeshi government found itself caught between a rock and a hard place, facing mounting pressure both domestically and internationally to address the grievances of its citizens. The brutal crackdown, far from quelling dissent, had only served to galvanize the opposition, pushing the nation towards a precipice of uncertainty. In a move widely seen as an attempt to appease the protesters and salvage its tarnished image, the government referred the matter of the quota system to the Supreme Court, the highest judicial authority in the land. The Supreme Court, after months of deliberation, issued a verdict that brought about significant, albeit not complete, changes to the controversial quota system. While acknowledging the historical context and the sacrifices of the freedom fighters, the court recognized the need for a more balanced and equitable system that did not unduly disadvantage a significant portion of the population. The court's verdict, a nuanced and complex document, attempted to strike a delicate balance between honoring the past and securing a more just future. The revised quota system, while a step in the right direction, fell short of the complete overhaul demanded by the protesters. It retained a reduced quota for the descendants of freedom fighters, while introducing provisions aimed at ensuring greater transparency and merit-based selection in government jobs. The court's verdict, while welcomed by some as a sign of progress, left others feeling that the government had missed an opportunity to address the root causes of inequality and create a truly level playing field for all citizens.